guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a very exciting destruction tutorial. I'm going to be showing how you can shatter windows inside of Blender using some simple particle effects, some white painting, an explode modifier, and a variety of other small techniques to bring everything together. This is the same process we used in order to create the shattering window in our Revelation Visual Effects Experimental Short Film, and it is a fairly simple process and can be applied in a lot of ways to make your destruction in Blender look really nice. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. The first thing we're going to do is of course just delete everything in our scene here. And now we want to create the window pane that we want to shatter. Now you can apply this technique we're about to learn to pretty much any object that you create inside of Blender. However, I found that the best object to use as a window in 3D graphics for this specific effect is just a simple plane. You might think that starting from a cube and then scaling it down on one axis would create a better window pane, but since we're using particles to drive our explosion, it actually makes things quite a bit more difficult. And uh, by using a plane, you can add some thickness to the glass later once we add all of our modifiers to them. So let's go ahead and just add a plane here. And I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis here, 90 degrees. So R, Y, 90. And then I'll just kind of scale it up here, create kind of a basic window. I might scale it a little bit on the Y axis here and just create something like this. And for the sake of this tutorial, I might also just recreate some geometry around our window here. So I'll just kind of add some cubes here, scale it down on the Z axis. I'll create like a floor, something like this. Then I'll add a cube. Just gonna create some geometry around our main window here. So that looks pretty good. I'll go into this object, go into edit mode. I'll add a loop cut here, put something here, and then I'll just extrude this up. Extrude it again. And you can skip this process, but I'm just trying to create some general geometry around our building here just for the sake of some environmental interaction because we're going to make the glass interact with our environment. All right, so something like this should be pretty good. Just make sure that your glass window pane that we're going to be destroying doesn't intersect with the frame of your window here. So try to get it as close as possible without interfering with anything. All right, so this is a nice starting point here. Now what we want to do is add a particle system to our glass window here and create the look of a shattering glass effect. Uh, before we do that, I want to rename our plane here. I'll call it glass window. And now I'll select our glass window, make sure our glass window is selected here, then I'll go to our particle system tab, add a new particle system. And as you can see here, right off the bat, you're gonna get something like this, which is uh, not what we want for a glass exploding effect. But let's say we want our glass to explode on frame 20. Uh, so I'll go to frame 20 here, I'll make the frame start for our particle system 20 as well, and then make the frame end maybe just a few frames ahead, so maybe 22. So there's a little bit of a burst of particles. And now what we want to do is increase the velocity of these particles. So I'll just go to our velocity tab, bring up the normal to say maybe 10. Not bad. And now we want to add a little bit of randomness to the particles. So I'll just go to our randomized factor here, increase this to maybe 10 as well. Let's see what that does for us. There we go, already looking pretty much like a shattering window style effect. Pretty happy with that. I recommend playing around with the normal velocity as well as the randomized setting here. Those are the main two that I play around with in order to get this result. And later in the tutorial, we'll also be playing around with the rotation here. But this is a good starting point. Now what we want to do is use these particles to drive how we break up and explode this glass window here. So we'll go ahead and select the glass window. I'll go to the modifier properties tab. Then I'll add a modifier and I'm going to use the explode modifier. And how this explode modifier works, as you can see, if I hold my mouse over it, it breaks apart the mesh faces and lets them follow particles. So if I play through our scene now, we have our plane falling at the specific moment where the particles burst. And it's actually, if you look closely, it's actually following a particle down here. Now, the reason we're not getting the broken up pieces in this case is because we need to subdivide our glass window plane many times in order for it to be broken up correctly. So I'll go ahead and go back to our uh, beginning of our scene here. And I want to go into edit mode with our glass window selected. Then I'll just go to edge, subdivide, and I'll go here and I'll increase the number of cuts here quite a bit. I'll subdivide it again. And I just wanna subdivide it enough to where the smallest shards of this window here will be good enough detail. So probably something like this should be pretty good. Depending on the speed of your computer, you may have to dial it back a little bit, but this should be pretty good. Go back to object mode here. And now as you can see here, 
our glass window is actually being shattered into a bunch of tiny pieces which are following our particle system. So this is looking pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our particle system settings really quick. And I don't want to see our individual particles, but rather just the glass window pieces. So I'm just gonna go here to viewport display and display them as none. And now we can view our shattered window by itself here. And obviously it still needs some work, so we're gonna have to dial this in quite a bit. But this explode modifier is the first step in creating the shattered window effect. Now from looking at the effect right now, there are a few things that I need to do right off the bat to make it better. First of all, I wanna make our ground plane here a collision object so that the particles actually interact with it. So for example, in the visual effect for our Revelation short film, we had all the geometry of the storefront as well as the ground enabled as a collision object so that the particles would interact with it in a realistic way. So I'll go ahead and select our ground plane here, go to our physics tab and make it a collision object. Then I'll also select our kind of storefront window frame here and enable it as a collision object as well. And right off the bat, if we play through our scene again, we get some environmental interaction. And there's a little bit too much bounce here, so I'll go ahead and select this, bring up the damping a little bit and the randomize and the friction, just to uh, you know give a little bit of a more realistic result. Still a little bit too much bouncing. Bring up the damping a bit more. All right, so this is looking okay so far, but now what we want to do to add more realism to this glass shattering effect is actually tell Blender which parts of the window to shatter and which parts to not shatter. So for example, we might want just the edges of this window to kind of stay in place so that you know just the middle part of the window has been shattered. So in order to do that, we're just going to use a vertex group and paint on where we want the explode modifier to work and uh, connect those elements together. So I'll go ahead and select our window pane here, go to our object data properties, add a new vertex group and we'll call it unshattered glass. And now what I'll do is I'll go to our white paint mode and with our unshattered glass selected, I'm just going to paint around the edges of our window here. And don't be too perfect with it because again, we want some imperfections as imperfections occur in the real world. So I'm just gonna kind of very, in a very rudimentary way, just kind of paint out where we don't want the glass to shatter. Something like this should be pretty good. Again, we can refine it later if we want to, but now we have a nice weight painted vertex group. We'll go back to object mode and then I will go to our modifiers tab here. And for the vertex group, I will select unshattered glass. And now, as you can see here, if we play through our scene, you can see that where we have weight painted that data, the glass is actually staying on our window frame. So already this is looking way more realistic. And once we add the glass material to everything, it's gonna look really good. All right, so now let's go back into our particle system settings and adjust a few more things. One thing I want to do is actually make some of these particles smaller or larger compared to each other. So right now the explode modifier is just taking little individual pieces of our glass window here and just breaking them up fairly evenly. In order to get a little bit more randomness, we need to use the size of the particles in the particle system, randomize them, and then apply them to the explode modifier. So in order to do that, first we need to go to our explode modifier settings, and then we need to check the checkbox here for particle size for the shrapnel. And by doing that now, as you can see here, the particle size based on the particle system settings is being applied to this glass window. So obviously they're way too small right now, but what we can do is we can just go to our particle settings, scroll down here to render, and then we can increase the scale of our particles as well as the scale randomness. So I recommend increasing the scale randomness all the way to one, and then we can slowly increase the size of these particles until we get something you know pretty close to the original size of our window and now as you can see here we're getting some more randomly sized smaller scale detailed particles in our glass window and now a lot of these chunks are still a little bit too big and i think the reason for that is because we haven't broken the window into enough pieces because we have too few particles in our particle system so i'll go ahead and select our window here and i'll just increase the number of particles to say something like 6,000. and now right off the bat i'm thinking this is going to look quite a bit better already looking much better and I might actually bring down the scale a little bit. So at this point, it's time to do quite a bit of tweaking in order to dial in the results. So I might increase the particle number a little bit, maybe 8,000. And again, depending on your computer, you might not be able to do this many particles. 
but this is the general concept here. Another thing I want to do to add to the realism of this shattering effect is actually enable the rotation and dynamic option for the rotation so that the shards of shattered glass actually rotate in 3D space. So I'll go ahead and select that. I'm gonna increase the randomize to one, I'm gonna increase the phase to one, and I'm also going to increase the randomize phase to one, actually to two, all the way up. Then I'm going to enable the dynamic option and then give them a little bit of angular velocity as well. So this is what we have so far. I'm just gonna increase this to maybe, this is in radians per second. So maybe something like 10, Let's see what this does for us. I'm actually gonna bring our number of particles down just so we can see the rotation a bit better. So now you can see what's uh, rotating. I think they could rotate a little bit quicker. So maybe 15. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Now I'll go back to our number of particles, bring this back up to 8,000, maybe actually 7,000. And now we'll play through our scene once more just to see what we're getting. And already this is looking pretty awesome. One thing you'll notice that's definitely going to take away from the realism of our glass shattering effect is that our particles of glass are just little, you know, 2D planes here because the element that we shattered is just a plane. So what we need to do is actually make those objects solid. And there's a very simple way to do that. We just go to our modifier tab here and we'll add a solidify modifier. And now if we turn off the other aspects of our simulation real quick, you can see that our plane actually has some width to it. And you can change the thickness here as well, depending on how thick you want your glass to be. I think maybe uh, 0.01 should be pretty good. You can see there's some thickness. And now since we've added this thickness, when we add the material for our glass window, there's going to be more realistic reflection and refraction on it. All right, so now as you can see here, if we play through our scene, we actually have chunks that are a little bit more realistic. And I think it's a little bit too thick actually. I might bring down a thickness to 0 0.006. And then I'm also going to enable the cut edges on our explode modifier for some nicer shrapnel. Let's go ahead and re-enable our environment here and see what we're getting so far. All right, this is looking pretty good. I might adjust the angular velocity a little bit more, give it a little bit more randomness here. Randomize the phase to one. Just trying to get these chunks to look as random as possible. You can also play around with the physics here, add a little bit of drag to uh, you know, make the particles slow down as the explosion kind of fades off. Obviously a little bit too much at this point maybe something like 0.2. Still too much, maybe 0.05. And that's looking a little bit nicer. I'm thinking the chunks are still a little bit big, but again, kind of just depends on what you prefer. So now what we'll do is we'll bake the cache data for the particle system, add the material for our glass and finish up with this tutorial. So we'll go ahead and select our particle system here, go to our particle settings. I do want to increase the lifetime of our particles to however long our simulation is going to be. So maybe uh, I'll do something like 130 frames. Then I'll also change the end of our timeline here to 130 as well. And then for our cache tab, we can bake this data. And uh, as you can see here, options are disabled until the file is saved. So I'll go ahead and save your file. Call this glass window shatter tutorial. Go ahead and save it. And now I'll go ahead and press bake all dynamics. And now we can scroll through our timeline without Blender having to bake our particle simulation every time. All right, so to finish off this tutorial, I'm just going to create a simple glass material for our window here. I'll go ahead and first go to our render properties tab. I'll switch the render engine to cycles. And we wanna make sure to, under film, I'm gonna turn on transparent and then transparent glass. Very important when you're adding glass to your scene. And then under our world properties tab, I'm going to add a very basic environment texture. Just add a simple HDRI that I've downloaded just for a little bit of environmental lighting to tweak the settings of our glass material. And as you can see here, if we go to render view real quick, these are our materials so far. So let's go ahead and select our glass window here and I'll go to the beginning of our timeline. 
and let's make this a glass material. So I'll go to new, and I found that the fastest way to create a glass material is by using a mix shader and mixing the material between a glass and a transparent shader. So I'll go ahead and do that. Make this a mix shader, make the first one a glass shader, and the second one a translucent shader. Sorry, transparent. And now we have, go ahead and turn these off for a second. We have some kind of glass window effect here. You can see the reflection of the HDRI in the background. For the glass shader, I might just bring up the roughness slightly, maybe 0.1. So you can see if I bring the factor to zero, it's going to be all of our glass shader. I wanna see what that roughness looks like, maybe 0 0.05. And the shading of this is kind of up to you. I'm just experimenting with what I like. Might increase the mix factor to 0.6. And then for transparent, we'll just leave it as is. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty nice little glass material. You can see we have some good reflectivity on it. For these cubes, I might just add an image texture of some concrete. Just add uh, some concrete to it. Make it box projection. Select the other cube here. Use that same material. All right, so now we have a very simple scene set up here. We have our glass and some concrete surrounding and uh, yeah you can play around with the colors a bit if you'd like just dial in the right look for the glass and of course make sure it looks good when the glass is actually exploding in your scene here so make sure to go a few frames forward when the simulation is actually occurring and yeah i think this is looking pretty good a nice mix of reflectivity translucency and uh, the refraction from the glass shader the main thing to me that sells this effect is the fact that not all of the glass is exploding as well as of course dialing in your specific part settings based on what you want but anyways guys that's how you can create some glass shattering effects inside a blender you can apply this technique to your animations or you can use it like we did in our live action visual effects destruction anyways guys that's it for this video I hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content and i'll see you in the next video